students today i have come with the second poem of class 12th an elementary school classroom in islam this poem has been composed by stephen spender stephen spender is an english poet as well as an english essayist Uh, he was a socialist and uh, he has always fought against the social injustice and uh, class inequality this very poem also deals with the same point of class inequality and social injustice in this poem he has taken as it is entitled he has taken an uh, elementary school of islam area and he has tried his best through his lines that what are the pathetic situations slum children they are sent to the school but what kind of studies they are getting there what kind of facilitations they are availing over there what hopes they are having and how their hopes are crushed all these have been given over here this poem has four paragraphs so paragraph wise i am going to tell you first paragraph is as far far from gusty waves the children's faces like rootless weeds the hair torn round their pallor the tall girl with her weight down head the paper seeming boy with rat size the stunned unlucky hair of twist and bones reciting their father's gnarled digits his lesson from his desk at back of the dim class one unnoted sweet and young his eyes live in a dream of squirrel's game in tree room other than this yes in this first paragraph you will see that he has tried to pen down the present scenario of that particular classroom of that elementary school of slum area where the children's faces are compared with rootless weeds weeds means plants without root you can imagine that if there is a plant and that has no root how strong it would be so these children are compared with rootless weeds their faces have no charm and far far from gusty waves what is the gusty wave that present advancement of the time they are very far from that they don't have any touch of them there is a girl and she is assamed she could not face anyone she is so poor she is so weak she has tried to hide her face paper seeming boy a boy has been told by him who is so slim he is compared with paper a rat like like eyes if someone is very slim lean and thin only eyes are coming out to be seen paper seeming boy the stunned unlucky hair twisted bones reciting their father's gnarled teachings it seems that those children who are over there they are so weak that their bones are coming out and it seems that they are suffering from gnarled teachings and they are inheriting their parents teachings gathiya rog ho gaya hai unko jaise abhi bachpan mein hi aur apne parents se unko virasat mein yahi mila this lesson from his desk at the back up or they are sitting in the back of the class cast has no light no beauty no charm light of what neither the physical light which can give light to them nor the spiritual light means light of knowledge there was nothing and the young eyes in the unnoted sweet and young his eyes leave there is a young boy also he is unnoted no one is caring for him he is also having a dream but what kind of dream 
He also wants to be free. He looks at the squirrels outside the classroom. He wants to play. But he doesn't have opportunity. He is unnoted. This is the first paragraph of the poem. Now, second paragraph I am coming. On sour cream wall donation Shakespeare's head, cloudless at dawn, civilized doom, riding all cities, belt, flowery, tortoise valley, open-handed map awarding the world is world, and it for these children, these windows, not their map. Their world where all their futures painted with a fog. A narrow street sealed in with a lead sky far, far from river capes and stars of the words. Yes, in next paragraph, the poet wants to say that there is the classroom and walls of that classroom have paintings of Shakespeare, a learned playwright, rising sun, cities, other civilizations, but these children who are sitting over there in that class, they are totally unknown to these, these places, these things. They are just a kind of dream to them. And awarding the world, its world. These are the world, outer world has been painted over there on the wall. And these children are also the future of the country. They are real world, but what they are getting? Nothing. And their future is painted with a fog. Yes, just from the school they go to their home. Cramped hole. Their home is told as cramped hole. In a very dirty atmosphere they leave. They don't come out from that. Their, pen, their life is painted with a fog. And not only fog. From fog to endless night. Because they are children, they don't have very much liability and responsibility. But as soon as, as they will grow, their liabilities will increase and with the passage of time, that fog will be changed into endless night, dark night, which will never be having a morning. These rivers, capes, towns, they are only a mere words. They are not going to touch the children. This is the second paragraph of the now, third paragraph, surely Shakespeare's with the map a bad example with ships and sun and tempting them to steal for lives slyly to their cramped holes. From fog to endless night on their slag heap these children wear skins peeped through their bones and spectacles of steel with mended glass like bottles beads on stones all of their life time and space are foggy slum. So blot their map with the slum as big as doom. Surely the paintings, Shakespeare's head and all these advancements which has been painted over there, they are just making a fun of these children because they are not going to achieve that. They are not going to see that. They are not going to be a part of that. They are having lint in cloths. They are so weak that it seems that skins have been wrapped over them. Their bones are coming out. They are wearing spectacles, but unshaped. It shows their pathetic, pathetic scenario in which they live, how much they struggle for their lives, how they survive. Is this childhood and is this a common childhood? of the whole world, of the whole country. This poet wants to say through these lines of this paragraph. And he is saying that from this foggy slum, from where they come out, there is always darkness. No hope is there. So he is saying that blot this map. Unless governor, inspector, visitor, this is the fourth paragraph, this map become their window and the window that sat upon their lives like catacombs break or break open till they break the town and so the children green field and match their world run a jure on gold sands and let their tongues run necked into books the white and green leaves open history their huge language is the sun 
and at last poet is appealing to the authorities of the nation and as well as to the authorities of the world that this type of scenario no way should happen he is appealing to the governor inspector visitor all the authorities that they should break this window this slum they should bring the children to the mainstream of the society they could also have their studies white and green leaves white means books and lean uh, green depicts here nature when they would be having book they will study they will learn and when they will come out they will meet with the nature and with this they will write their own signing history future is waiting for them history there's whose language is the sun they will write their history themselves this is the appeal of the poet in this way you see that through this poem poet is making an appeal to all the authorities to all the people that you should do at least at your level best you need to do to bring these kind of children who are suffering from poverty who are living in pathetic scenario they are they are to come out and they are to be joined with the mainstream of the society they should be educated they could get they can they should get better education better facilities better nutrition so that they could be healthy and when they could be healthy they will involve themselves in a study and they will write their history they will make their future and when all of them and uh, of these class will go in the mainstream of the society then only we can say that we are human beings students i hope that you have understood the poem with this i am going to discuss about some of its question first question how do the faces of the classroom look like yes classroom is signing but the faces of these children although that that classroom has also a dull light but these children's faces were more dull alois lack of nutrition they were having not proper clothes they were having everything weighed down head explain yes that girl who is tall but she has tried to hide her face she is ashamed what the pathetic scenario is there that you, that you can imagine that is not a open society that is of a classroom what do the poet want for the children of slums how can their lives be changed yes poet wants that these children of slums should be brought into the mainstream of society by education they could write their own history own own story they could change their lifestyle and everything and this is the work this is the duty of the authorities of any country they should try to cover them and at last at last i would like to say that give a short summary of this poem in your own words try to write everyone can write i think it's a very good poem and you all are uh, willing to write on it at in the begin as in the beginning i told you that the poet stephen spender he has worked a lot for this kind of social injustice and class inequality so it is the poem i hope students you uh, will understand this and with this um, i again request you to please subscribe this channel and don't forget to push bell icon so that next of my video could easily be reached to you thank you stay blessed jayanth